So step three is usually what we jump to when we have a question on the homework or the exam, right? We're usually, you know, the, the prompt gives us enough that we can ascertain the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. We don't necessarily have to write that down. Of course we should, uh, but, but a lot of times we're not going to because we're going to just try to get the answer as quickly as possible, right? Uh, and then, you know, again, step two, the level of significance usually given to us, or we just default to 0.05 uh, if we don't have any context, right? So step three is going to be usually where we actually start. And step three is where we calculate the test statistic. So first we have to uh, select the test statistic. And so I'm just going to tell you that when we are testing a mean and the sigma is known, So the population standard deviation is known. We're going to use this formula, Z, which is our test statistic. Test statistic. I'm having such a hard time saying that today. If I say that 10 times fast. So that is equal to X bar. So this is the average for the sample minus the hypothesized mean mu. And then we're going to divide this whole thing by the known standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So this is the sample mean. This is the population mean. This is usually the H naught. This is the population standard deviation. And this is the sample size. So ultimately, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to determine the difference, we're trying to determine whether this distance between the sample mean and the population mean is statistically significant by finding the number of standard deviations that that difference is. Essentially, yeah, so we're trying to find out how many standard deviations this sample mean is away from the population mean. So there are many test statistics. We're going to be using this Z statistic, and then we'll use a T statistic. But there are many throughout the land of statistics writ popular. 